Welcome to lecture 4D, Optimization Techniques in Cache Memory. Over the last few videos, we learned about the basic elementary concepts in cache memory, right from cache memory mapping to identification to block replacement algorithms, various write strategies. The whole purpose of any memory hierarchy is, given the set of memory references coming from processor, we need to service them as quickly as possible. So, there exists a class of optimizations or improvements suggested on cache memory. How can you reduce the average memory access time? We first learn about some very basic elementary optimization techniques in today's lecture video. And in all these optimization techniques, our focus is how to reduce average memory access time. We learn about different techniques which will help in this process. So, we know that accessing in cache memory, the CPU first try to access the cache and that is what is known as hit time. So, CPU is going to refer to cache, it is known as hit time and if it is a miss, then the extra time needed all the way going into main memory and bringing it is called miss penalty. Look into average memory access time is defined as so in every access whether it is a hit or a miss, this green component is there always. So, this green component is there in all the case whether it is a hit or a miss and this red component is there only when there is a miss. So, if it is a hit, it is purely this circle. If it is a miss, it takes half of the green, go all the way to main memory, come back and then complete the remaining portion of the green. So, average memory access time is defined as hit time, the time to access the cache and then return the corresponding word that is called hit time plus miss rate into miss penalty. Now, we try to see what is hit time, time to find the block in the cache and return it to processor. It involves time to index, tag comparison and transfer of data. And miss rate is a fraction of cache access that has resulted in a miss. And miss penalty is the number of additional cycles required upon encountering a miss to fetch a block from the next level of memory hierarchy. Now, to reduce average memory access time, you know this is the equation given by AMAT is given by hit time plus miss rate into miss penalty. Now, how can you reduce average memory access time? Because we always want memory access to take less amount of time. To reduce average memory access time, either reduce hit time or you reduce miss rate or you can reduce miss penalty. So, these are the three ways by which we are going to work. But this is a slightly complex equation. If you bring in up some techniques which will reduce miss penalty, then automatically miss rate will, will, will go high. Or if you do something on hit time, then sometimes miss rate and miss penalty will get impacted. So, these three terminologies are very closely knitted. We cannot play around with only one technique. All are equally getting affected. So, in this lecture, our whole idea is you have to reduce average memory access time. And the techniques that we use is very simple. Come up with techniques that can reduce hit time, come up with techniques that can reduce miss rate and techniques that can reduce miss penalty. But we have to carefully do it in such a way that impacting one, trying to tweak one of the parameter will be counterproductive in some other aspect. So, altogether we have to get average memory access time less. First, let us see very simple techniques. The first technique is called larger block strikes to reduce miss rate. So, when I am going to increase my block size, let us say previously my block size was 16 words. So, for every miss, I go and bring 16 words. That will reduce compulsory miss for the next 15 words. If the block size would have been 32 words, for every miss, I am going to bring larger 32 words. That is the way it is working. So, when you increase the block size, you are trying to increase the spatial locality that will reduce compulsory misses. But what are the disadvantage? It is increasing miss penalty. How miss penalty is increased? Previously, I have to bring only 16 words. I can bring only one word at a time. So, it will take 16 consecutive bus cycles to bring 16 words. Now, when the block size is doubled to 32 words, it takes more time to fill up a cache block. So, my miss penalty will increase. You require more time to fetch a block to the cache. It is basically a bus width issue. And for a given cache size, if you increase the block size, then the number of set will come down because total cache size is same. Total cache size is nothing but number of sets into number of or the block size. If you multiply that in the case of a direct mapped cache. 
So, if one parameter, if you increase block size, automatically set number will come down, which can increase your conflict mess. So, increasing block size is a good idea, but there are two aspects to it. When you increase block size, compulsory miss will reduce, but conflict miss will go high. Beyond a point, conflict miss will be very high than the saving that you get in compulsory miss. That is a takeaway. So, when more number of blocks will be mapped to same location, conflict miss is going to increase. And sometimes when you increase block size to very large quantity, it can bring useless data and evicts useful data and that is what is known as pollution. So, look at this graph. It is a data collected for some of the application. On the x axis, we have block size in terms of bytes, 16 bytes, 32 bytes, 64 bytes, 128 bytes. And on the y axis, you have the miss rate ranging from 0 percent all the way to 25 percent. Consider, let us say I am considering a 1 kilobyte cache. That is what you can see. The misses come down and then it goes high. So, you will be getting reduced compulsory miss as the block size increases and on conflict miss is going to be very high when you go for larger block size. The same trend, it dips down, then goes up that has been shown in all different size of cache. That we are compared with different size of cache and then try to vary the block size and see how the miss rate is performing. The trend is more or less similar. Now, whatever big block size you take, still you have some category of misses that is coming and that is a basic conflict miss that you get. So, first technique was employing larger block size. The next technique to reduce miss rate is go for larger cache. So, when you go for larger cache, you can reduce capacity miss because you can accommodate more memory footprint at the drawbacks of longer hit time, higher cost, area and power. So, this is a table that will show us for one of the representative application. So, on raw, you can see that different cache size. 4 kilobyte cache, 16 kilobyte cache, 64 kilobyte cache and 256 kilobyte cache is been used. Let us say we fix up one block size. For an application, the miss rate goes from 8 to 3 to 2 to 1. So, as you move towards the right side, as we employ larger cache, miss rate is coming down. Now, for a given cache, if you go down, that is actually block size variation, the misses come down 8.5, 7.27, then it goes high 7.78 and 9.51. So, we have seen the properties. So, larger cache will help you in some way at the expense of longer hit time. Why it is longer hit time? Mo the bigger the cache, the more number of set index it have, it will take more time to decode and reach the corresponding set. Of course, naturally it is going to take more of floor area, so higher cost area and power. So, for few applications like FFT, a simple program, a speech processing program, weather prediction program. We are trying to see if you see can you go for larger cache size, yes and on the y axis we have miss rates. We have seen that all the applications when you increase cache size you can see that there is a dip in the miss rate. But beyond the point your miss rate is not coming down even if you increase the cache size. That is because every cache or every application whatever be the cache size it will surely have compulsory misses. So, compulsory miss will be there even in an infinite cache. Now, the third approach to reduce miss rate is going for higher associativity. Fully associative caches are the best, but it take more hit time because you have to search in all the ways and then find out where there is a hit happen and then how to take out the appropriate data. It is good, but then it will take more time. So, the best possible way is do not stick on to direct map to cache, which will have a lot of miss rates due to conflict miss. Increase the associativity to an optimal possible level. Now, what are the drawbacks? If you increase associative, so what are the advantages? What are the advantages? It will reduce conflict miss, it will reduce miss rate and eviction rate, but disadvantage is when you go from direct map to cache to two-way associative or four-way associative cache because of the extra multiplexer circuit, it will increase the hit time. Because in direct map to cache, you go and then directly find it out what is a set and then extract the data if it is a hit. But if it is a two-way associative, you have to parallelly perform tag search in both of them and then where the hit occurred, only in from that place we can extract the data. So, that will produce slightly higher hit time. And it has a slightly complex design than direct mapped and this tag, more tag comparator circuits are required. So, average memory access time, if you look into this 
red one indicates a direct map to cash. So, as the cash size increases, the misses will come down and uh, the yellow one is the same cash if it is fully associative, then the misses are very, very less. Whatever be the associativity, even if you increase to infinite cash, still you have lot of misses and they are the compulsory miss. So, capacity miss is predominant if it is a small cash, whatever large cash it is, still there will be some kind of a miss which is called compulsory miss. In between, based upon your associativity, the conflict miss section varies. So, direct map to cash has more conflict miss, whereas fully associative cash has less conflict miss and two way, four way and eight way, all other set associative caches have a conflict miss which is lower than direct map to cash, but higher than fully associative cash. We have learned three techniques which are reducing the miss rate. First one is increasing the block size, second one is increasing the cash size and third one is increasing the associativity. Now let us continue with uh, yet another approach. Can we reduce miss penalty? Yes, that is what we are going to see, multi-level caches to reduce miss penalty. So what should be the purpose of cache? Caches should be faster to keep pace with the speed of processor because cache is going to interact with the pipeline. So, hit time of the cache should be equal to the processor speed and cache should be larger to overcome the widening gap between processor and main memory. So, what you can do is rather than a cache and a main memory have one more level of cache which is bigger than your first level cache and which is faster than your main memory. The first level of cache should be small enough to match the clock cycle time of the fast processor low hit time. The second level cache should be large enough to capture many access that would go to main memory thereby lessening the effective miss penalty. So, if it is main memory only, if it is cache and main memory only any miss go all the way to main memory bring multiple words of data and then store. Since main memory is off chip it takes more time. But if you employ one more level of cache, the extra time that you needed all the way to bringing in something from main memory can be reduced much by taking something from the cache alone. It is a next level of cache. So, I can have L2 cache, L3 cache like that. Each cache is having more capacity, but it, they will take more hit time because the number of sets is more. So, the idea of multi-level cache is L1 cache should be small and simple enough to have lower hit time. L2 cache should be large enough such that many of the misses from L1 should be accommodated in L2 as a hit and it can effectively reduce miss penalty directly from main memory because if L2 is there, the miss penalty of your L1 cache will be much smaller if you are going to take something from L2 than L1 directly interacting with your main memory. This is the logical diagram of a multi-level cache access path. We have CPU, L1, L2, L3 and main memory, different levels of caches has been shown. HX indicate the hit rate of level X and TX indicate access time of level X, let us say it is cache or main memory. Now, average memory access time is defined as hit time of L1 plus miss rate of L1 into miss penalty of L1. Now, this miss penalty of L1 is defined again, miss penalty of L1 is hit time of L2 plus miss rate of L2 into miss penalty of L2. Now, you substitute this miss penalty of L1 here and that is what you get in the last line, average memory access time is hit time of L1 plus miss rate of L1 into hit time L2 plus miss rate L2 into miss penalty of L2. Now, miss penalty of L2 can be defined as hit time of L3 plus miss rate of L3 into miss penalty of L3, like that it can be applicable in a nested circuit. Now, this multi-level caches are going to reduce your miss penalty and now there are two things as far as miss rate is concerned. So far our concept of miss rate is number of misses divided by number of memory access. Now, local miss rate, it is a number of misses in a cache level divided by number of memory access to this level. Number of misses in a cache level divided by number of memory access to this level, that is our normal miss rate. Now, global miss rate is number of misses in a cache level 
divided by number of memory access generated by CPU. So, consider the case that you have your L1 cache and your L2 cache. Now, this is CPU. Let us say CPU is going to make 100 requests to L1 out of which 90 of them is a hit. So, what is local miss rate? So, 90 of them is hit. So, 100 minus 90 that is 10 is the number of misses. 10 divided by 100 that is called local miss rate. Number of misses in a cache divided by number of memory access. Out of 100 memory access, 10 of them resulted in a miss. So, local miss rate is 0 0.1. Now, only these 10 will go to L2. Let us imagine in L2, 80 percent of them are going to be hit. So, I gave 10 requests out of which 80 is hit. So, 80 percent is the hit that means only 2 is my miss. So, my local miss rate is 0 0.2. Number of memory access is 10 out of which number of misses is 2. So, 2 by 10 0 0.2. So, 0 0.1 is the local miss rate of L1, 0 0.2 is the local miss rate of L2. Now, what is global miss rate? Number of misses in cache level divided by number of memory access generated by the CPU. Now, number of misses I got is 2. What is the number of memory access that I have? The number of memory access made is total 10 only in L2, but number of memory access generated by the CPU, CPU has generated 100. So, the local miss rate is 0 0.02. So, as far as L1 cache is concerned, local miss rate and global miss rate is same, but for L2 cache, local miss rate and global miss rate is different. Now, when you have multiple levels of cache, we have the context of whether they are inclusive cache or exclusive cache. When your L1 cache is a subset of L2, then whatever is there in L1, surely it will be there in L2 that is called inclusive cache. When your L1 and L2 are mutually exclusive, so the contents in L1 will never be there in L2, then they are called exclusive cache. So, the working of inclusive cache and exclusive cache is slightly different. So, think of a case you have 128 KB of L1 cache and 256 KB of L2 cache. If it is inclusive hierarchy, total on chip or total size on cache is not 256 plus 128 because this 128 is actually a copy that is there in L1 or L1 is actually copying from L2. Whereas, in the case of an exclusive cache, the contents of L1 and contents of L2 are separate. So, this diagram shows whenever there is a core request comes in an inclusive hierarchy, it goes all the way to memory fill the last level cache which is called LLC and then you fill from L1 and whenever there is an eviction that is been needed that is been thrown out and then you are going to supply. Whereas, in this case you are first going to fill up in L1 that is going to be evict into L2 and that is the way how things are being processed out. Now, there is the next miss that is going to be prioritizing read miss over writes. So, if a read miss has to evict a dirty memory block then the normal sequence is to write the dirty memory block and read the miss block. So, think of a case that you are going to perform a store operation on memory. So, you are going to write something on a memory location and then you are going to load something from some other memory location and load a new value from the same memory location. So, let us imagine all of them are indexed to cache 0. So, I have to perform first a write. So, imagine it is a dirty block you are going to evict something. So, this is mapping into the same thing. So, I encounter a read miss. So, here there is a write, then there is a read miss. So, what we are trying to see is the optimization is you have to copy the dirty block to a buffer and read from memory and then write the block this will reduce CPU's waiting time. So, we have is you are going to perform a write and if it is a write through cache you have to first write to cache and main memory together. Now, think of a case that you have a dirty block that is something that is written. Now, there is a read miss that comes this read miss is going to evict out this block. Since it is dirty what we see is the eviction process will be over only if the dirty data is returned to main memory it will take lot of time in the meantime the read miss is waiting. So, the optimization is whenever you have 
a write operation and a read operation to be done. Prioritize read over the write. So, this dirty write, I will put up the value in the buffer, perform the read so that the block is being updated. You got a new block to read, processor will continue. In the background, you complete the writing. That is called idea of prioritizing read misses over write. So, we have learned five cache optimization techniques today to reduce average memory access time, larger blocks which will reduce miss rate, larger caches will reduce miss rate and higher associativity also will reduce miss rate. Multi level caches will reduce miss penalty and prioritizing read miss over writes also will reduce miss penalty. There are a few more other, so whatever we have learned is basic optimization, there are few more cache optimizations that we will learn in the next lecture. Thank you.